but I want to bring the message to you. Today's message is entitled, Fight the Good Fight. Fight the Good Fight. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your anointing. I pray today, Lord, that I may decrease that you increase. Let the words of my mouth be your words. Let the thoughts in my head be your thoughts. Lord, I pray that, uh, that you will help us open our ears to hear, open our minds to understand, and open our hearts to receive what it is that you'd have to say to us today, Lord. Lord, I promise you I'll be cautious and careful to make sure that all of the honor and glory goes to you because you are the only one that deserves our praise. And we thank you for that in Jesus' holy name. Amen. God's Word tells us to fight the good fight of faith. Do you know why the Lord told us to fight the good fight of faith? Because there'd be battles. There are going to be battles. We are called to be spiritual warriors in God's kingdom. I fear in the day that we live in that there are fewer spiritual warriors and more Christian wimps along the line huh come on somebody uh, a lot of folks you know if you're going to be a warrior what's that mean you're waging a war a lot of christians don't want to wage a war they want to duck away and stick their heads in the sand and not recognize that there are battles to be fought and i want you to know through the power of god there are battles to be won in the name of jesus you see, we're not just casual churchgoers. Nowhere in the Bible will you find that the people of God are supposed to be casual churchgoers that just come and sit on their padded seats. No, we are called soldiers in the army of God. There's a lot more to being a soldier in the army of God than there is just a general attender of a church who comes and sits. In the spiritual world, the battle over world domination has already been fought. The Lord Jesus has won that battle for us through his finished work at the cross of Calvary. Can somebody say amen? amen? And yet we need to recognize that Satan's lease on this world has not run out yet. We're still going to have to contend with him. But praise God just for a little while longer. Amen? amen. We're going to have battles. There's no doubt about it. But we can take comfort in the fact that we aren't called, according to the word, to fight him. We do, however, have to fight the good fight of faith. We don't have to fight the enemy because he is already a defeated foe. The problem is, is that many of us have not seen that realization in our own lives and have lived in the victory that has already been acquired for us through the shed blood of our Lord and Savior. And so we tend to want to fight the enemy. And nowhere have we been called in the Word of God to do that. We have been called to fight in one battle, and that is to fight the good fight of faith. The Lord says to us, in fact, that all the other battles belong to Him. He said the battle belongs to the Lord. I'd rather give Him the battle, amen, against the enemy of my soul because I can't win. Rick Lopez himself... Without the power of God cannot win the battle against the bully of my soul, and neither can any one of you. We need the Holy Spirit, and all we got to do is fight the good fight of faith, which you and I can win. Come on, somebody. Amen. Sometimes we get tired of the constant fray. We get tired of the continuous battle, and it's like every day there's another battle to win. However, we have been equipped to do battle, and we are destined to walk in victory. I live by destiny, and I am destined to walk in victory. And in order to have those victories, I must fight the good fight of faith. And in order to fight, I've got to be a qualified soldier in the army of God. Sometimes we get tired, we all do, but we've been called into God's army for a purpose, for His purposes. And his purpose is for us to walk 
as light and to walk as salt, declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ wherever we can and wherever we go. We've been called to fulfill the Great Commission as representatives of Jesus Christ. I can't answer this question for you. I can only answer it for myself when I, when I propose the question, what kind of representative for the, G, the gospel of Jesus Christ am I actually being? Only you can stand before the Lord and answer that. But you're not going to do it well without a fight. The enemy's going to try to stop us any way that he can stop us. He's going to try to shut your mouth any way that he can shut your mouth. He's going to try to build fear up inside of you and doubt inside of you anytime he can to keep you from sharing the testimony that you have. But you need to remember that the devil does not have the authority over us. He does not have the authority to stop us. Although he's sometimes going to hinder us, and although sometimes he will plant the seeds of doubt in our mind, my Bible teaches me that he does not have the authority over the sons and daughters of God who are washed in the spilt blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Can you give the Lord a praise in the house of God? Amen. And none of us, though, can go through this battle without experiencing what it feels like to stand when everything seems lost. Because those are the true moments when your faith is tested, when everything around you is falling apart, and it seems that all is lost, even after you've stood, and then more battles and more trouble comes along. That's where we need to fight a spiritual battle. But this is because this is when you can get weary in the fight. The Apostle Paul, he admonished his spiritual son Timothy to fight the good fight of faith that we just read about in our text. Now, I've, I tell you what, I, I have one definition for a good fight, the one you win. Let me just say, the bad fight is the one you lose. I shared this morning, I've only been in two fights in all my life. Praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, knock down, drag them out, fisticuffs. Hallelujah. And since my face is still as pretty as it is today, apparently I didn't get whacked too often. Amen. Amen. There's a reason why I didn't get whacked too often. I had one way of fighting. That was put my opponent in a headlock and hold him there till somebody pulled me off. And it worked both times. Hallelujah. Didn't have to land a single swing. Praise God. So, yeah, you better listen to what I say because I tell you what, I got one mean, nasty headlock, let me tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the stakes are too high. You can't quit. You can't throw in the towel. You've got to fight the good fight, and you've got to win, and you can win. You are able to win because Jesus has already won the battle for you. All you have to do is fight the good fight of and faith is faith that is centered upon the finished work of Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. That is where he said just moments before he passed away, before he died. Keep in mind, he rose from the dead. Amen? But just before he died, the Bible says he, knowing that all things were accomplished, when he said all things were accomplished, let me say it again, knowing that all all things were accomplished. Did you hear me? If all things are accomplished, is there anything else to accomplish? That means your healing was secured right there. Your salvation was secured right there. Your freedom from depression was secured right there. I'm telling you, your answer happened right there on the cross when he, knowing, knowing. Let me tell you, when Jesus knows something, it's known. He, knowing that all things were accomplished, said, I thirst. And they gave him drink, and he said the most famous last words that have ever been uttered by any person on planet Earth, it is finished. Did you hear me? Listen, we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We celebrate the fact that we do not serve a dead God. We serve a God that gave his life for us, but rose again by the power of the Holy Spirit three days later. Can you say amen? amen. But nowhere does it say that the resurrection is what accomplished all things. 
Jesus, knowing right then and there at that moment, Father, everything you sent me to do is complete on earth and in heaven. So he says, it is finished. Do you know there wouldn't, Jesus wouldn't have said it is finished if there was more for him to do? He would have said, uh, it's almost finished. It'll be finished in three days. Now, I'm not speaking, I'm a re I'm resurrection life church for crying out loud. We're all about the resurrection and living a resurrected life. But I'm just telling you, the center, the object of your faith is Jesus knowing that all things were accomplished and said, right here, right now, it is finished. <laughs> Amen. So we're just called to fight the good fight of faith. Not faith in your church going. Not faith in your holy rhetoric. Not faith in your Bible reading program. Not faith in your prayerfulness. Not faith in your tithe and your offering. Not faith in your preacher. Not faith in your church. But faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. I have found if I will wage my war against the enemy with my faith, faith based on that moment, I win every single time. If I put my faith anywhere else, oh, I have, I have what seems to be some wins, but ultimately it's not a win. So I'm trying to help you where, to know where to center your faith at. To quit is to admit defeat. We are not defeated, no matter what the circumstances may look like, no matter how dark it may get, no matter how bleak or destitute the situation may look like, you are not defeated. The Apostle Paul said that God always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Once again, what? In Christ. Christ Jesus. What part of Christ Jesus? His finished work at the cross of Calvary. We are caused to triumph because of the death of Christ. We also have to remember that soldiers must go into battle with the proper training. They have to go into battle with the proper arsenal, the proper equipment. And God will equip us to do whatever he's called us to do. All soldiers have to go through a basic training before they, before they can receive their assignment, before they can receive their first orders for their first tour of duty. And during this time, they go through very rigorous physical and mental training. Any of you who've ever been in boot camp know that you cannot write home and say, that was the best eight weeks of my life. No way, Jose. Nuh-uh, not at all. My best days began when I got out of boot camp and was able to go to tech school, and then things started changing a little bit. But the sole purpose of that training was to get us ready, to get us prepared to do our job, and to be properly equipped to do whatever it takes to get the job done in even the most severe and harshest of environments that we would not deviate from our training but do what we were taught to do. My point is you can't go through the battle without the proper training. And yet it is interesting to me that so many Christians don't want the proper training. They just want to come to church. They just want to come and have their moment on their four-inch pad to, uh, to, and I'm talking about the seat, of course, uh, to, to hear a little bit, feel a little bit good, go out there and then not live the life completely sold out for Jesus Christ the rest of the time or have a string of failures not you know just waiting for the next time to go to church this is supposed to be like boot camp for you did you hear me this is supposed to be like basic training for you so that when you leave this place and go out there into the world you can you can just shake off the the chains of the enemy and shake off the doubts that he spins in your way and shake off the temptations that so bother you so much and shake off the besetting sins that so easily trip you and I up. Come on, we got to quit looking at this as just time to come and soak up a little church stuff and start looking at this 
this like basic training so we can go out and wage a war against an enemy that's already whooped. Did you hear me? Already whooped. Hallelujah. Jesus gave him a good whooping. Hallelujah. Praise God. The very lives of these soldiers and the lives of the soldiers that are around these soldiers depends upon them doing their jobs and doing their jobs well. Your very life, my very life, and the lives of those who are around us depend upon us waging a spiritual warfare well and doing it based on the training and the equipping that we receive when we come into this place. When you're in the military, you don't get to sleep whenever you want to sleep. You don't get to do whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, whenever you want to do it. I'm just here saying, you belong to the military. Private property of Uncle Sam. I know so. Uh, I, was, I, know I did my tour of duty, praise God. And uh, I was very light-skinned, still pretty light-skinned. I can, I can burn, but not like I could back in the day. And they told us, you, you better take care of that. You get a sunburn and have to go to the infirmary, we can, we can give you a court-martial for destruction of private property. Descri I mean, are you serious? Made me wonder, why in the world did I sign my name at the bottom of that document? I got off of that bus, man, I'm telling you, life changed right now moment my foot hit the pavement, I was like, oh my God, what have I done? I had no choices anymore. Had to wear the clothes they gave me. And they never give you clothes that fit well. Had to wear the socks they gave me. The underwear they gave me. Use the towels they gave me. Go to the bathroom when they said I could go. Brush my teeth with the toothbrush they gave me. Thankfully, they didn't make me use the same toothbrush to clean the latrine. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for that. But they could have, and I would have had to, because I didn't belong to me. I belong to them. And let me help you with something this morning. You don't belong to you, but you belong to him. And you are in the army of God. When are we, as, as uh, casual churchgoers, going to begin to recognize that we are the property of Jesus Christ? And we can't do whatever we want to do, say whatever we want to say, go wherever we want to go, uh, consume whatever we want to consume. We belong to Jesus Christ. We are bought with a price, and we are his property. Amen. And get this. We're supposed to be soldiers, soldiers in the army of God. The Apostle Paul compared us to soldiers for a reason. We must be prepared to learn to do battle as a fully trained and a fully equipped soldier of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe it's time for us to quit being wimpy as Christians and start being severe as warriors of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about being mean. I'm talking about giving the devil a serious hard time. Amen. The purpose of all this discipline is training is not to wear you down, but to make you ready for the battle, the battle that will surely come. I said, the battle that will surely come. If you're not experiencing battles in your life, you're probably just sitting around not doing much for Jesus. You are no longer a threat to the devil. Uh, you know, and, and in fact, if, if you figured out how to go through all of life and never have any battles, I sure wish you'd come tell me how you figured that out. But I don't think you got the right secret because we should be in a battle all the time. The enemy should be upset with us. He should see us as a, we should be on his most wanted list down at the post office in hell. If there is one. Huh? Maybe we ought to just go postal on the devil for a change. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you have your training and you've been taught, and you're following the course of action that you've been given, and you're doing your assignment as a soldier, 
You will stand strong. You will know your place. Fear will not dominate you. Anxiety will not detour you. Nothing will change your mind because you know what you're supposed to do in Jesus, and you know the victory's already been won. It ought, I tell you what, how easy would it be for a soldier to go into battle knowing his, his opponent's already whooped? Huh? Come on, somebody. You're going to have to learn how to stand strong. You're going to have to learn how to do battle. And this training is necessary in order for you to have the victory. The thing is, is we're not doing physical battle like our military today is. And I'm grateful for that. Amen? You know, I spent four years in the military, but it was during peacetime. I never had to go to war. I never had to see all of that stuff. We got guys, maybe even gals, sitting in this room right here today who served in Vietnam or other uh, arenas of war who've seen some horrible things that they wish had never been planted into their brains. I am so thankful that I didn't have to go through that. So we don't battle a battle like these soldiers do, but we do battle a seriously ugly fight. And that is a spiritual battle. We are trained to do warfare in the spiritual weapons. And the weapons that we use are supposed to be spiritual weapons. Not earth suit weapons. Not weapons of our willpower. Or weapons of our just grit your teeth long enough and get this, think this thing away. The weapons of our warfare are God's weapons. Did you hear me? The weapons of our warfare is, is God's armor. Man, this shook me up when I got to reading this this week. I've read this passage of Scripture in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 through 18. I, don't even, I couldn't even tell you how many times that I've read it. But this one thing stood out for me this time above every other thing. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. It ain't my armor. My armor will fail. My armor's got chinks in it where the enemy's fiery darts can get through. But I'm supposed to take up God's armor. Let me help you with something. The devil can't get through God's armor at all. I, now, he may tailor fit it to me once it gets on me. Boom, it fits. But it's his armor. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, take up. Some of us take it up, put it in a backpack, and carry it around with us. You're not only supposed to take it up, you're supposed to put it on. Amen. So take it up, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And listen to this, above all. When it says above all, that means nothing else is more important than this in God's armor. Above all, take the shield of faith in what? The finished work of Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. It's God's armor. Take up the shield of faith so that you'll be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, I don't know about you, but the enemy does not have a single shot pea shooter on me. Seems like he's got an automatic, automatic weapon with clips all around and he just keeps filling that thing and firing on me all the time. Now, I'm going to take the shield of faith, and I pray that I have it so strong in my hand by the power of the Holy Ghost that when those fiery darts hit that shield, they just bounce back at the enemy. And he has to be like Neo in the Matrix just to miss them and get all back on it and stuff. Huh? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all of the saints. Friends, I want you to know today that you have been given God's armor. I've tried to put on the armor as my armor before. I've put on the armor many times, but I don't know that I've stepped back and went, wait a minute, I'm wearing God's stuff. 
This ain't my stuff because my stuff fails. I'm wearing God's armor. His can't fail. It's a pretty sweet outfit, let me tell you. You got to have it to do battle. You got to have it to defend yourself from the attack of the enemy. And I think it's time for us to go into the enemy's camp and begin to steal, take back from him what he has stolen from us. Amen. He has no right to have your marriage. He has no right to have your children. He has no right to have your grandchildren. He has no right to put depression upon you. He has no right to put sickness on you. He has no right to take your finances from you. And it's time for you to put on the armor of God and fight the good fight of faith and send him fleeing in stark terror for a change. Amen. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you that word flee in the greek has the uh, has the meaning of of running in stark terror the imagery i get of someone running in stark terror is the person who accidentally gets into a bee's nest and the whole hive of bees comes after that person They look like the most foolish person on the planet as they are running and going in circles and waving their hands all over the place just trying to get away from those bees. That's what the devil ought to be doing to you when you resist him, resisting him only in faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, which is the shield of faith that God has given you. I think somebody ought to give the Lord some praise in the house of God this morning. Satan does not want you to know that you're already victorious. He wants you believing that you continue, you should have to continue to fight him in this ongoing battle. That's not the case. All you have to do is fight the good fight of faith. Because the devil will come and distort that truth. He'll twist that truth. He'll plant doubt upon that truth so that you begin to waver in your faith battle. And the moment he gets you wavering in your faith battle, that faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, is the moment you begin to lay down your shield of faith and your armor, and now he gets some open pot shots at you. I say it's time to to, to tell the devil, you ain't getting no more pot shots at me. Come on, somebody. He doesn't want you to know that you're already victorious. He'll do whatever he can to try to bully you into submission to him. But I want you to know, I declare to you by the power of God and through the word of God that he does not have the right to do it. He does not have the authority to do it. That doesn't mean that we aren't going to have to fight. It means we got to keep on fighting, but fighting with God's weapons and fighting with God's armor. And I encourage you to put on your spiritual armor and begin to fight these battles that are trying to defeat you, that are trying to defeat your family, that are trying to defeat your loved ones, and stand strong. I want you to say this with me right now. Say, the victory is mine. Say, the victory is mine. Say, I won't give up. Say, I won't be defeated. Now give the Lord some praise. Amen. It's the honor of fighting the good fight. The honor of fighting the good fight. you got to keep the faith, and you got to keep your faith built up so that you'll have endurance when the fight comes. A soldier without endurance is a soldier who will quickly give up in the heat of the battle. When the fighting gets hot and you do not have endurance, you'll lay down your weapons and hightail it. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? Not you, you might oughta, shoulda. Well, if you get around to it, no, you must endure hardship. God's word is telling us that we can endure. Guess what? Then we can. If God's word says we can, then we can endure. We not only can, but we can have full assurance that we will come out victorious when we keep ourselves built up on the sword of the Spirit. The problem is is that most of us in Christianity today 
have head knowledge of the truths of God and not heart knowledge of it. And head knowledge will never win the battle for you. You need to have this word of God, this sword in the sheath of your heart so that when you don't have this around and the enemy comes along, you can pull your sword out and begin to quote scriptures at the enemy and watch him flee in terror like a hive of bees is chasing him down the street. It can happen! Say it with me. Say, I will not fail. I will walk in victory. The victory that was purchased for me. Say it, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We got to have a victorious attitude. You got to get rid of that defeatist attitude and that defeatist mentality. Satan's going to try to discourage you. He's going to do his best to tempt you with doubt. This is one of his weapons. One of the ways that he gains ground on us is when he puts discouragement in. And we allow that discouragement to begin to overtake us. And we begin to doubt God's promises. Brothers and sisters, don't allow that to happen. It may not be easy, but you're just going to have to endure. Because the Lord will give you the victory. The victory is yours. You need to also remember that you're not just a lone, single soldier out there all by yourself. We're an army together, a brotherhood uh, and a sisterhood of believers waging war together. We are collectively the body of Christ and the army of God. And we are so much stronger together than we are apart. We got to build each other up. We got to watch out for each other. When the enemy's zeroed down his crosshairs on one of our brothers and sisters, we need to get alongside that brother and sister and help them take the enemy out. Can you say amen? amen? And I think if we all took this attitude, think about how much more we could accomplish in the kingdom of God if we had this attitude I am an overcomer. I am a conqueror. I am a victor. I have won because Christ has won. And I've got my shield of faith. And my faith is centered on what Jesus Christ did for me at the cross of Calvary. I'd like to encourage you today to keep the faith and stay strong in the Lord. Stay in fellowship with other like-minded believers and build each other up. In the Lord Jesus. I'd like to bring this message to a close now. It's going to take this type of teamwork. And this type of teamwork will cause us to walk in victory. To walk in the victory that has already been won. I think we spend too much time trying to acquire the victory. When the victory has already been acquired and it's time for us to just start walking in that victory. And I'm here to share with you today. I know I've said it a few times, but it will bear saying again. And I will repeat it for as long as I have breath to preach for the rest of my life. That the place where I've got my victory was the finished work of Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. And if I'll center my faith right there, I will always realize the victory that has already been won for me. Amen? This became a severe revelation for me some years back. I fought so many ongoing failures. I, I fought so many. The Bible says, lay aside the sins that so easily trip you up. Man, I, I thought I was laying them aside, but I put my faith in my church attendance, or I put my faith in my preacher, or I put my faith in the church or denomination that I was a member of or attended. And I didn't realize that there was one object of faith that I was to have, and that was Jesus knowing that all things were accomplished. And when I began to put my faith right there, I was so able to fight the good fight of faith like never, ever before. And I'm here to share that with you today. If you'll begin, the next time temptation comes on, you just say to the devil, Jesus knew that everything was accomplished, and he has given me that victory over you. You ought to thank the Lord for it right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> say this with me, I will not quit. I cannot be defeated. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, 
Check this out now. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Did you hear that? It's your faith in what Jesus did that overcomes. Bow your heads with me, please. Thank you, Jesus, for this word today. It has certainly reminded me to keep fighting the good fight. To not give up and to not give in and to not lay my armor down, to not lay my weapons down, but to put on the armor of God and to pick up the weapons of God and remember what the object of my faith is. Faith in Jesus Christ. Let that revelation sink into each and every one of us today, Lord. And may we never set it aside. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I would like to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus into your heart this morning. Maybe you're here today, you've never asked the Lord to forgive you of your sins. You've never said, Jesus, come into my heart and be the Lord, Savior of my life. Maybe you'd like to do that today. Or maybe you're here and you have done that before. And you might even still call yourself a Christian. But you know that you've walked away from the things of God and you know that you're not living the life that you've been taught to live in His Word. And you want to come back today and you want to make things right with Jesus. I'm not going to embarrass you. I very much believe that this moment of recognition that you need Jesus is a very private one. Now, there comes a time when it's a public confession that you believe and you confess with your mouth. Oh, yeah, we believe in that. We're going to give you that opportunity before this service is over. But all I'm looking for now is you just sat by, by the raising of your hand will signify your recognition that you need a Savior in your life today. Whether you've never accepted Him or whether you just need to return and start again. If that's you, would you please raise your hand and let me pray with you this morning. Anybody, God bless you, dear. Thank you. You may put your hand down. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. You can put your hand down. I'm going to pray with you. Anyone else before I before I pray? Lord, I pray for these two this morning that have raised their hands, signifying they recognize their need for you, Jesus. And I pray now, Lord God, that you would bless them, they would feel your warm embrace, that they would know they are accepted and that they are received in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you've been blessed, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah.